Hi, welcome to part one of implementing the Automation Centre of Excellence kit. So some of what we've done in our Centre of Excellence videos will be applicable in terms of the prerequisites for the Automation kit. So similar to the Centre of Excellence, we'll need an administrative account Ideally, this would be purposely named something like automation, but we are, for the sake of these videos, we are going to cross over and utilize our same Power Platform administrator account, just because I've only got the one per user license. In terms of roles, again, it's going to need to either be Power Platform Service Admin or Dynamics 365 Service Admin. The account will need to be mail enabled. And because in this setup, we're going to be utilizing Azure Key Vaults to store credentials and secrets, it will also need to have the Azure contributor role as well. So, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to create an app registration. It's going to be like for like, but I'm just going to create one for the, this specific purpose. So we had our Power Platform Service one, which was for the Center of Excellence. So we're going to create a new registration. I'm going to call this one Automation Kit and leave the rest as default. Next, I am going to go to API permissions, add a permission. Then we're going to locate dynamic CRM. And we're going to select the user underscore impersonation, add permissions and then click on Grant Admin Consent, yes, and wait for it all to light up and show us green. We're gonna leave that here for now, and now we're going to create some key vaults. So essentially, you don't have to, but it's recommended that you create one of these per environment, so you've got your dev credentials stored together, test, pro production, and so on. We're going to select our Azure subscription. For this, I am going to create a new resource group. So any future Azure resources that I need to create that are to do with the automation kit are going to go into this resource group. I'm just going to call that automation kit also. Should really have prefixed maybe the resource group with RG just to show its purpose, which will do a similar thing for the key vaults, a KV for key vaults. We'll just put automation F. However, we'll need to make this unique. So I'm just actually going to call this KD Automation Kit. And for the sake of these videos, I might just get away with using one rather than having one for test, dev, test, and prod. UK. And then we'll click Review and Create. And then when it becomes available, click on the Create option. Now that we've got our key vault, we're now going to register the Microsoft Power Platform resource provider within our Azure subscription. So we're just going to come on over into our subscription, select resource providers on the left,
and we're looking for Microsoft Dot Power Platform, which I don't think we'll have already, which we, we must have done in a, a, a previous video, but you, you just need to ensure that that's registered. Uh, if not, you would select and then click register. Next, we're going to ensure that the key vault has get secret access for the Dataverse service principle. So we're going to come into key vaults. Once within our key vault, we're going to click on access policies on the left and we're going to create a new one. For the permission, for the secret permission, we're going to select get. So under secret here, we're then going to click next. And then for the serv service principle, we're looking for the Dataverse one. Let's just see if we can type Dataverse. And it's this one here with the seven at the end before the first hyphen and all zeros at the end. So we'll select that one, click next, next, and then create. So that's basically going to allow it to get secrets that are stored within this key vault. Another thing we need to do is for any environment where we're making use of the automation kit, we need to ensure that it's enabled for custom code co components because it does make use of the creator kit. So we're going to go to aka.ms forward slash ppack, which is going to land us in the Power Platform Admin Center. For the purpose of our video, we're going to select the our center of excellence environment. So we're going to click on environments, then center of excellence. Then once the initial environment screen's loaded, we're going to click on settings. We're then going to expand product, click on features. And um, we're going to ensure that this Power Apps component framework for Canvas Apps is toggled to on and then ensuring that you also click save to commit it. The rest of the configuration we're going to do in a what's constituted as a main environment, as there are some little nuances to satellite environments, basically additional environments that you want to make the automation kit available in. So the next step is to download the Power Platform Creator Kit, which we've done ahead of time. And I'll put a link in the description. We're now going to come on over to flow.microsoft.com or powerautomate.microsoft.com and then we want to switch up into the context of the environment in which we're going to import the main solution so ours is the center of excellence and then in the on the left we're going to click solutions Although, to be honest, you, we could have gone to Power Apps, same difference, but I suppose because it's all about automation, we'll, we'll keep in Power Automate land. And then we'll click Import Solution and then browse to that file that we downloaded. So at this point, this is actually just the creator kit that we, we're not touching on anything auto, automation kit specific at the moment, but this is a a prerequisite and we're then going to click import now that the creator kit is successfully imported we're now going to import import the main version of the solution file not that like one again within our center of excellence environment so i'll put a link in the description to that as well so we're going to click on solutions again
click on import solution, browse. Here you can see we've selected automation COE main, emphasis on the main, and then click next. Next again. And now we're going to have to set up a few connections. Now that we have suitable connections created and populated, we can now click import. What, what we're now going to do whilst we wait for the solution to import and because the Power Automate approvals functionality isn't configured by default, we're going to basically create a dummy flow that's going to make use of an approval action to just kick off that initial approval instantiation process. So all we're going to do is click on flows, create a new flow. We'll just do it the instant type, manually triggered, we'll just call it approval and click create. And the key bit is basically to add in an approval action. So we'll search for approval, we'll select start and wait for an approval. We'll just do initial approval setup. We'll sign it to our account. And then we'll just click save. I'm just going to come back a step. Could have done it by, by clicking on test, but we'll click run. Continue, run the flow. That should be enough, but just, just for completeness. Come into Outlook and just ultimately approve it. But that, that's going to kick off and create the necessary elements within Dataverse, essentially. OK, so let's recap. This far, we've got the Creator Kit successfully imported. We've got the Automation Center of Excellence main imported successfully. You'll actually see there was a failure for the flow approvals call, which is what kicked off as part of running that flow with the approval task initially. So all I did, and the failure reason was basically because it was in the middle of importing uh, another solution, is I just ran the flow again. It's kicked off the job again, and this time it, it should successfully complete. And we can see it's successfully completed now as well. So we can see we've got solutions. You'll also notice that you, you get this Microsoft Flow Approvals Core Solution, and that's basically what we're after for the approvals. So finally, we're just going to wrap up by checking in on the three security groups that should now be created within the environment that we imported the solution to. So we're going to come to aka.ms forward slash ppac to get to the Power Platform Admin Center. And you're going to want to give the necessary people, assign them to these security roles as you see fit. So we're going to click on environments. Once the environments is loaded, we're going to click on our center of excellence. Once the center of excellence environment is loaded, we're going to click on settings. We're going to expand users and permissions. We're going to select security roles and in the top right, if we do a search for automation, you can see we've got these three project admin, project contributor, and project viewer roles. And I'm just going to add our admin account to the admin one. And that will leave the video here and we'll continue in a, a future video for the, the rest of the configuration. Thank you for watching.